How are we doing? Good. This is Paul. Um, going to start your story today, aren't we? Yep, we are. Next private sector, how long did you work in private sector? Uh, 15 years, I was there. Forest, Forest Bank, Bank. we yep. probably overlap, we've discussed that, haven't we? Yeah, we just miss each other, I think. Um, I know a lot more than I did about this lad an hour ago. Uh, we've had a chat. We're going to do his story in stages. We're not even going to do the 20 questions with this guy. He's got a lot of stuff. Uh, I find it super interesting, me. Um, so we're just going to... I come to be a prison officer. Yeah. From prison officer to Oscar. Did you go to Oscar? Did you get a senior or Oscar? Yeah, no, I was um, a PCO and then I got my seniors. Um Weapon security before that. We call them prison officer, just prison officer. Yeah, yeah. That prison custody officer, bollocks, fuck that, they're a prison officer. Yeah, prison officer, the day. SO, um, and then up to Oscar. Right. Over to you, mate, in your own time, take your time. Yeah, I started in 2003, I think. It was. Um, a friend of mine, Andy Barrow, um, and a lad called Kev Graham had started previous to me. Um, they'd started there, they're from the world where I'm from. Um, they started them and obviously sold for decals. Yeah. So they were there for about a year, I think. Um, and then I got in through a lad called Roy Gilmore, who sadly passed away recently. Um, good lad. Really good lad. He used to play football with Roy. So he got me an interview uh, at the bank, uh, sorted me out. I think he actually did the interview, to be fair, with a lad called Chris Coop. You remember him? Yeah, he, uh, he interviewed me, Roy, did he? well. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I started there, I think in, I think around the December, I think I started there. Um, went through the initial initial training, as you do, uh, for eight or nine weeks, I think, uh, with a couple of good staff. Um, I think I started with a lad called Des Ashton, who was one of the lads, who, who was a cracking lad, he was there a long time, Des. Um, so yeah, did, did the eight weeks training there, um, learned quite a bit. Um, different aspects of what to expect. What do you think is the training? I didn't know any difference. You know, I didn't know any difference. It was a lot of stuff that, you know, you didn't need to know at the time, which, you know, it goes in one ear out the other, all about the sort of probation side of it and HDC and, and all that kind of thing. I think primarily you just need to, to get on the wings and do your shadowing, which, which you did. did. What um, did you think first time you went in the jail? I remember we were on our training course after a few days, somebody didn't turn up who was supposed to be giving us a bit of a, a talk, right. took us into the jail. Yeah, I think the training was done um, at an army, army place. Yeah, they yeah. do it at the yeah, barracks. Yeah, at the barracks, yeah. So we did it there. Um, and then, as I say, you, you got you, you got your little bit of training for your, your um, use of, not use of force, your breakaway techniques and that to, to let you go into the jail on your shadowing. Yeah. Um, and obviously you didn't have keys on your shadow and so you, you're pretty much useless or a spare part, aren't you? Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's quite daunting when you get in there and intimidating. And just obviously when you're going through the airlock and then you, you're you getting shepherded down there and obviously the prisoners know you're brand new. So you just stood there and I think I was about, it must have been 20, 25 I think when I started, which was relatively young at the time. There wasn't that many younger people at the time and you were getting more ex-squaddies and well, more... Well, we said we overlapped, didn't we? So. Yeah. Yeah. They started, initially got a good intake, they got good staff, not a lot of experience to start with. No. But a lot of them staff, a lot who we both know and get on with, are still there. Yeah. Aren't they? So, like yeah. you say, one or two youngsters, they were like a couple of 21 year olds on our course, one left. Mm. The other one had got good people around them. Yeah. So, you know. That's it, yeah. I mean, there were few and far between the younger sort of people, but they were all like 30 ish. I was probably the youngest on my course, I think. Um, so yeah so you did the initial shadowing really and that gives you a flavour of what you're going to expect you you yeah. were put on different wings so one one day you'd be on A wing one day you'd be on F wing and those wings would have different regimes I think B wing was the YO's at the time yeah, it was, yeah. and that was like fucking Beirut uh, you know every cell you went in the fucking light cell, the light switches ranging off the walls and, and what not it was a bit at that time do you know what thinking I, I bet you did start when I was suspended did I yeah, definitely. It must have been. Yeah, it must have been. I think because, like, I think Mark Millen was B-Wing SO. Yeah, he um, was, yeah. B-Wing. Um, and then a lad started, uh, Paul Loglow, he's still there. I think he was on the um, Mike Kilburn, people like that. Yeah. Killer. Oh, my. So, yeah, so I did my shadowing um, on each wing. Uh, and sort of, you basically gravitate towards what kind of staff. I think, you know, you get a feeling whether one of the wings has run better than the other, which is yeah. which is what I did. Um 
and I I wanted to work on Ewing at the time. There was an SO called Marie Dana. Yeah. Um, and she was she was brilliant. She was she was very good. Much. Yeah, she was really well with Marie. No, and that, and that was it. And it was, they had good staff as well. They had good PCO people, uh, prison officers on there. Um, and you know, when you go on there, and you knew it's like anything. You know, if someone's not asked that you're on there and you just don't talk to you and just crack on with it. But if they get you involved and they to try and explain stuff to you, then you you know you, you want to work there, don't you? On with that sort it's of made to be welcome, isn't it? That's it's that it, sort yeah. of thing. Um, and as I was saying, you, you you look at all the, the prisoners sort of are with the staff and whatnot. So yeah, so I wanted to go on A-Wing. So when you're doing your shadowing you, and it's kind of thing, it's like you have to report back. So when you go back in the classroom, they're like, what, what do you think? Um, and I think Mick McCormack was doing the train. That yeah, time. Mick, it, yeah. yeah, he was good. And he was always one for keep you there for a little bit longer in your training when he wanted to give you a little bit of a talk. Um, so you'd report back what you what your day was like, how, what happened, and then you're always, oh, this I seen this and I saw this. This lad was arguing, so you're a bit starry eyed when you when you first start and you don't know any difference. Um, so yes, yeah, so I did did the eight weeks training, uh, and then I got put on a wing, um, which I think the I think was it still wire wise? I think yeah, I think B wing had it, gone from B wing to move them over to A where A one was the wire wing. Yeah, but I was put on A two originally, which was adults. Um, and I was put on with like Paul Wood, um, Emma Geith, um, Sharon Morgan, uh, a few others. Um, but there was only two two officers on a wing at that time. I think you had two and an SO downstairs. Yeah, they just they just sort of brought it in, didn't they? Yeah, and it was, I think it was around seventy six with the maximum <clears throat> seventy six prisoners to the two staff. Eighty six. Was it eighty six? Yeah, I remember that one. <laughs> yeah, so it was, and at, at the time you were th- you could have been through on with. Your mates who've just been off the course with you, yeah. So you'd open up a wing, and you'd be like, what "The fuck are we doing here?" Yeah, no clue. Cl- have not one clue at all. Um, and then that wing A two was quiet. You had a few tasty lads on there, prisoner wise. Yeah, and you had a few lads on there that you were a bit don't really know what I'm doing here. But then you had your cleaners as well, and you, you had a couple of lads that say, "Listen, lock him up," because you, you you do you they know you knew, so they're going to have you off. You yeah, know what I mean, have your eyes out, which is you just got to learn on you. Um, it is difficult that part of it that aspect you know if someone's kicking off you don't know what you're supposed to be doing you don't know and like you say new staff and new staff that's it and it's it's the regimes it's it's what you do and that, that's your bread and butter that's what you know you open up at whatever time it was half seven seven o'clock in the morning so what you got to do then right you got to get the lads up for breakfast were they still doing their toast oh no just recently well i think when i was well before i had left he was still he was still doing toast how stressful is that no bread no bread no milk cereal if you were short you'd be running around the wings trying to fucking get what you needed you know day to day running running a wing dealing with prisoners way less stressful than things like breakfast weren't it yeah because you'd have enough bread some somebody take 10 slices of toast five lads ain't got it one of them lads you know, he's straight in your face. Where's my fucking toast? That's it. Straight the first thing in the morning when you don't need it. Obviously, there's two of you on a wing, and especially like canteen day as well. So if there's two of you, you got your canteen to do. You're the only one on the landing to look at your landing as well. Getting the canteen. People will never understand. Will no, they? it was horrendous. Like you say, and you chase, if you're chasing your tail first thing in the morning, if someone's come on during the night and robbed toast, like bread for the other wing, yeah. or robbed a crate and milk. Yeah. So you'd always say to your staff, make sure before you go the night before, make sure we've got. Staff are all like right for the morning. Hide it away. Hide it away. And that's how bad it was. You'd have to write, you'd have to hide your own stuff from the rest of the staff on another wing. And then, um, yeah, so it's crazy. It's sort of an introduction. You're like, you, these are the things you don't get told on the training. Um, yeah, the other things you sort of pick up, but things like that first thing in the morning. How, how long do you think it take you uh, to. So when you would enjoy, you'd enjoy it? Because me, it was all new, which I liked. However, um, I think it was probably six months in me when you know I sort of looked and thought that I got an idea of what I was doing because you learn quick, don't you? You do. I, if you're on your own, you learn quick. Yeah. Well, I had like the likes of Woody, um, who was a, who was an ex army squaddy, and he had the boxer, boxer, good lad. Yeah, good lad. So he, he pretty much, if you're on with him, you and the lads knew how far you could push him. You could learn, you could learn a bit and you could see and you and if you've got good stuff to learn off then it's it's happy days you might take a little bit off here or a little bit off him. Was Jimmy Jimmy still there? Sergeant Major type guy. Uh, Jimmy well he worked in the um, industries, Jimmy. His lad his, yeah, 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 yeah. his lad, um his lad's still there. Um, oh 
Yeah, I've oh, forgotten his name now. That shouldn't really. Cracking. Cracking Lovely fellow. Yeah, he, he retired. He, he went to uh, Blackpool. But moved, retired to Blackpool. Um, but yeah, his, his lad Daz is still there. As far as I'm aware, he's still there. But yeah, character him. Um, but yeah, six foot, like, I'd say that definitely. I'd always say, once I've been there a while, I'd say to staff that don't worry about you're not going to learn everything. Six months is... is How day. long in job before you got someone new that you were mentoring? <sighs> months, couple of months. It'd be the next couple of months. months. Couple so of months. you're brand new, two months in with yeah. brand new staff yeah. working with you. I think I was, what, working A2 um, with a lad and he started the course after me, Steve. Um, I can't remember his name now, bloody lad. And we were literally, I was I was the experienced member of staff, so I was looked at as experienced after three months. But I'd had the start where I'd had, um, that when, obviously, within the jail, you, you work on the wings, so when you walk in the jail, you get detailed, right, Albertson, you're on B-wing today, or if that's your wing normally, but, yeah. you know, but some days you might be on F-wing, you know. How bad is that? That's horrendous. But saying that, it, it is bad because you don't know the cons. So yeah. a lot of people just take that as an easy day. Oh, I don't know this wing, so I'm going to do the bare minimum. I've got a set of keys, I'll open up, I'll go through the motions. And it's shit for the, the lad who works or the girl who works on there. Because yeah, they're doing everything. Definitely. But it's, it's horrible when it's not your wing, because you, you know your wing, you know your lad's on there. You know how it's run. You, you know you're not going to get that much shit. But on another wing, you know, you're like, oh, for fuck's sake. So it, it is hard. It is hard. But so... As I say, when I started, one day it happened this particular day. I got put on GDs, which is general duties, which is basically, you you know, you're doing meditation. Did you like that? Yeah, I did. It, it was a break because back in the day, you never really used to get it. It'd always be the lads yeah. who knew the Oscars or the shift managers would get GDs or who were, who were in with details. So your GDs would but mostly normally be people are doing overtime. Did you not find, though, that the, the Oscars and have a look, yeah, Paul... I'm going to have you on there, I'm going to have you on there. And the GDs were the people who couldn't do the job quite often. Sometimes, yeah. Yeah, it depends on, uh, obviously, who, who was on shift um, and what favours, as I say, they do to, to get onto GDs. General you know duties, I mean? that. General duties, You've got yeah. a radio and you could be doing anything. Yeah, you could do, you'd be doing exercise, you'd be doing medication in the morning. You'd just go where people need you, yeah. wouldn't you? You were like extra Move, yeah. stuff. Escorts. So if, if someone needed an escort and um, uh, who was on own protection, you'd have to go and escort him. Or if they were on that document, which is a self-harm book, um, you'd have to escort the prisoner with the app book to wherever yep. they needed to go and whatnot. Anything that happened with, with the first response or someone was in trouble or there was a fight or a throw over onto the exercise yard, you were there as first response or second response. So on that particular day, I was general duties, which and a lot of the times, um, which a lot of people don't know, you have a lot of uh, prisoners that need to go to hospital, outside hospitals and, and to attend, yep. um, as well as like funerals or dying relatives, which normally are, are emergencies, dying relatives and that kind of thing, but escorts the hospital are planned. Yep. Um, and a lot of work goes into that the day before. If Joe You're Block, still using taxis? Yep, still using taxis. So... If I, as an Oscar, which I later learned, that I've got three escorts today, so I've got to take it. So if I'm sending an escort out, you're sending a prisoner, you'd have to look at the risk assessment to say how many staff you're going with. Yeah. Now, at the time when I started, there were two two staff to every escort because that's just how it was. Because it's private sector. Yeah. And they tried to do things bare minimum. Correct. So that day I was taking a prisoner on my first escort. So I was, uh, Phil Callow was the Oscar one, said to me, right, you're going out with Andy Barrow, who was my mate anyway, yep. ex-army lad, good yep. lad. Uh, you're going out on escort to Salford Royal, taking uh, Brennan out. So I was like, all right, yeah, sound, not a problem. It's the first one I've ever done. Neil Brennan. Neil Brennan, yeah. Um, so you get taught about escorts when you're on your training, how cuffing procedures and whatnot. Um, so yeah, so Andy went to get Brennan, um, and then you get they took, get took up to reception, they get strip searched before they go out. Now, Neil Brennan at the time had, had, had suffered a suspected broken hand, is what he was going out for. Yep. Um, so the cuffing arrangements were double cuffed to one hand, uh, which was to me, because I was the new staff, so I was the one getting cuffed. And he was in charge, so he had the bag and the escort, paperwork and the cuffs and the keys. The keys, that's right. So just to explain to people who don't understand, normally prisoners double cuff like that. Yep. Cuffs on his wrist and then a cuff from his wrist to you. Correct. So he just got two cuffs to one wrist to, to you. To one wrist because, because it, his other hand was... I mean, don't get me wrong, it was his hand, it wasn't his wrist. So yeah. really, he probably could have had one, but it makes... It's neither here nor there, really. He's got cuffs on. So um, so Andy cuffed him up, 
I'm ready to go. I uh, was just waiting for the taxi to come, which it sounds daft to people who have never been in the job. Um, but yeah, they use prison ta uh, taxis, which is a local firm called 1010. Just to explain again to people, uh, a lot of prisons don't have the transport. It's not only private sector use taxis and other transport, you know, strange ways. They're their own transport. You do your own escorts. Forest Bank did have their own transport. And later, in fact, no, they were using them when I were there. But they had, they, they they had the had choice, transit, didn't they? Yeah, they still had transit vans. Um, and we'd normally do our own transfers with them, um, you know, into prison transfers yeah. um, if they needed someone moving um, pretty quickly or whatever. But primarily for escort purposes. Because you need a driver, that's the third man, wouldn't you? So. Yeah, so unless you've got an auxiliary hanging about that's doing nothing, you could yeah. drive. Um so yeah, so we used escort, we used taxis. So that day, waiting for the taxi to come up, and I was cuffed to Brennan. Uh, I was sat in a holding cell, uh, and he's he sat next to me, just talking random, whatever, because I didn't know the lad. And I say he'd only been there a couple of weeks into the job, so his his hands shaking, knocking against me. So I'm like, "You all right?" And he's like, "Yeah, yeah, just the cuffs are cold." So I'm like, "All oh, right, okay." Didn't think any more of it. So taxi pulls up, and it was a transit. It was it was a transit taxi. So me and Andy, so I get Brennan into the taxi, the, the driver's behind me, so I'm sitting, going backwards. Brennan's on the left side of me, Andy's sitting adjacent where you are, so we've got him boxed in, basically. Uh, go through the, the vehicle lock, as you do, and I'm sat there with him, and his, his knee's shaking against my knee. So I'm like, what's up with you? Are you alright? And he's like, no, no, I'm just, just cold. Right, okay. So I didn't think again, just think, didn't think anymore. Come out of the prison. As you come out the jail, you get the, the barrier comes up, you've got a little roundabout, and as you go round the roundabout, there's a road leading onto the main road of Agecroft Road. Yeah. Opposite the funeral where the funeral um cemetery is. Where next to that there's a little lay by area because where people go and walk the dogs yeah, yeah. it's on like a, a whatever park or whatever it is. So as I'm I'm going backwards down the road, I see this car speed up four by four. So I'm thinking that's going a bit fucking fast. So as as it's coming up, up in my periphery, see he's got a balaclava on. So then you just think, oh, for fuck's sake, what's going on here? Car speeds up, slams on, slams in front of the car, yeah, taxi. Obviously, I know some, something's not right, and then it's a kind of thing, you, you know, when you say, oh, you, you, everything slows down, yeah. and it literally does, I'm thinking, I'm going to get fucking killed. At first, I thought, is this a train exercise? This can't be real here. It's a fucking, this, does, this doesn't happen. Human nature, it's, it takes you time to react, yeah. however long it is. That's yeah. what we do, isn't it? Well, escapes don't, you know, when you, when you get your training about escapes and all that, they don't happen. No, of course they don't. So they just, just don't happen. So, so I'm, I'm trying to process it. I think I'm going to get fucking killed. So anyway, car speeds up, slams on. A fella comes out with a balaclava on, got a, got a gun in his hand. So I'm thinking, for fuck's sake. So Andy's, Andy sees Andy's like, we're all like, fuck, fuck's sake. Don't, don't go out of view. Don't Sorry. go out of view. Keep so it in. So, lad, balaclava, he's hitting the window with the gun, the base of the gun, the butt of the gun. So door slides open. Obviously, it's a situation you're going to give the prisoner up. It's, yeah, just, it's just it's one of them. It's just how quickly you can do it. So as the door, say the door's there for the with the lads with the balaclava. Army has got the gun to my head. Uh, cuffs here, and he's putting it to Andy's head. He didn't know who's got the cuff. The, yeah. the, uh, the cuffs, uh, the keys. Sorry. Um, so Andy's got the keys. Andy says to him, "Look, you have to keep. No, no, you do it." So I had to move Brennan round to near the door yeah. on my arm. Where Andy could get the cuffs out, and they're, they're fiddly anyway. The cuffs, yeah, of course they are. Fucking horrible. So without got, somebody sticking a gun in your gun face. In so uh, he's got the guns, mine. Got the guns around these heads. So I'm thinking, for fuck's sake. Um, so we managed to get the cuffs off quick. Andy thinks he's going to get a fucking clobber with the with the gun, but no. Right, Brennan's gone. Pff, get in the car, boosh, gone. Happened in seconds. Taxi driver. Taxi driver sh sh shitting himself. He's like petrified. Doesn't know what's happening. We don't know what's happening. Was just so where Andy's got. When a prisoner goes out, you've got an escort bag which contains all your, your extra cuffs, your escort chain if they need yep. an x ray and all that. Where it's got as well, it's got its paperwork of who the prisoner is. Escape pack. Escape pack, yeah, which is the, the, which is the important thing. If his last known address, what he looks like, yep. what he's like on the wing, known associates, blah, blah, blah. Um, so as soon as that happens, we're trying to figure out what's gone on. The window is all shattered and the taxi, so we're like, quick get back to the jail which only round the corner yeah it's like right and he's got the we're in the escort pack's got the phone so and he's on the phone to the police right this is who we are we've just been held up gunpoint runs goes back 
tries to get the barrier open, speeds into the car park. I run into the gatehouse, uh, which is where the staff come in during the day. Um, and I run in with the fucking cuff hanging off me with no prisoner. And then hell, hell broke loose there. And then I think Rick Dalton, who was uh, a lad who worked in there, he says something on the radio, Oscar won, uh, whatever's gone. And then obviously the jail gets locked down. Uh, people run out, management, Nashi, uh, Marie Featherston, I think it was as well. How long you took the job at this point? Uh, off the course, I've been on the course, couple, and then from, from live, a couple of weeks. So that was my first escort I ever did. So it, it was, it can't get much worse than that, can it? Memorable. Is memorable, a bit of yeah. statement. Um, so they run out, what's going on? Trying to explain it to them. They get the escort pack, they run back in the jail, because that's all they're interested in, to find yeah. out if they've made a mistake, what's happened. Um, whereas the taxi driver's still there, what's going on? Did anyone, on? like, sort of, are you guys all right? No, Take to- no. Nashi, Paul Nashi, who's a security manager, Nashi, who's laid back as they come, he sort of walks out. <laughs> Um, what's going on, lads? Bro, me lad. What's going on? Um, this is what's happened. Right, okay, let's get back. So we had to, the taxi driver, we parked his taxi up, get him to come into us, um, and then we wait for the police then uh, to take statements and find out find out what's going on. Um, then all the senior managers come up, because I was unknown, I didn't know anyone. I'd been there weeks, they didn't, they didn't know me, they knew Andy. So sort of much, pretty much the focus was on him. They were asking us questions, what, obviously we explained it to them, but it was like, no sympathy or fuck all. It was just like, oh, it's a good story, innit? It's a good, good war story to tell. And you're like, really? Rather, it was you rather than me kind of thing. Um, so yes, we waited for the police. Um, and then they took our statements. They were asking, obviously, how did I know him? Did I know off the prisoner? Um, what was his demeanor like? Blah, 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 which I explained. Um, so we got interviewed for quite a while um, with regards to that. Um, and then we, <laughs> we went home. And then they said, come back the next day. Um, Were you interviewed at any point, like, in a hostile way, as in, the have you helped him get off? Yeah, That's... well, not hostile, not as such. You know what I mean, though, Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. No, they did ask those questions. Were you familiar with him? Did you yeah. know him? He has, but he was, and he knew him because he worked on B-Wing as a prisoner, and he'd been yeah. caught with mobile phones before. You see, he was only 21, yeah, him, was he, but he was, a, he, was an, he was an old lad. So I think he was from around the Salford area and he was quite a, quite a known lad. Had a few quid, but the police thought originally they'd got him out to kill him. They thought, he's only got, I think he was only doing 12 months. Yeah. So he thought, they sprang him out to do with me. Was that another gang or whatever? So that was their sort of take on it. So we came back the next day to sign a statement. So we were just hanging around waiting. Nobody said anything to us, manager said, you know, you know nothing like that. It was just like, all right. Um, Did you turn up for work next day? Turn up for work for next day, yeah. Um, police came, signed the statements and whatnot. Um, and then that was it then, nothing. No support, how, how are you? Um, just went back back to the job. Um, but that was the time again. Like you're saying, it, t- it takes a while to do your job. But then I was getting a few, because he was an own lad, work got around, then it was me on the escort. Yeah. So then I started getting a bit of shit off the, off the cones. You know, you should have shot you, you should have blown your head off, blah, blah. And now I'm trying to find my feet as an officer. Yeah, we are. All regardless. Um, so I struggled. So, but Andy, we may obviously you know how the company works and it was UKDS at the time. Yeah. Uh, so Andy went off, off on a shaky for you know, I've had no support, I'm not getting anything uh, off them with regards to help or anything like that. Um, so I tried, I, I stuck at it for a little bit, but then a couple of comments were made and I thought, you know what, it's not worth it, I wasn't getting any support. So then I went off, I went off for a couple of weeks uh, because all I got off Ivor Woods, who was the governor at the time, he said, listen, take, take your girlfriend out for a meal and then give me the receipt. And then I had one f- telephone call from the chaplain, it was a lady chaplain at the time. Was it Sharon? Yeah. She was lovely. Yeah, she was. Um, she rang me, asked if I was okay. Um, and that's all I got, nothing else. Um, I know this is this is a stupid thing to ask, but did you were you having nightmares? I can't I can't imagine that is a, a pretty. I, no, I was lucky. I was with Andy, do you know, because I knew him. And yeah. He was ex-army. He'd done so. Did you sort of... Yeah, we bantered, and it. He, he was a mate anyway, and it's like yourself. You know, you've done the job. You, you see shitty things. You see horrible things, and it's gallows humour. You know, you laugh about it and go, oh, "Fuck fuck." You remember when that happened? Do you remember your mates who are yeah. counsellors? And that's it. And, and so we went through it, kind of. I mean, people were like wary, and they didn't want to bring it up. But I laughed about it because nothing happened. I, you know, I survived. Yeah. There was nothing like I didn't get shot. I didn't get killed. I, I was all right. Um, 
But I worked and then I went on to nights for a little while then. So I, I thought... Just as a break. Just to come up, to get out of the way a little bit. Um, so I did that. And then as it went on, Andy ended up leaving. Because he, he just thought, you know what? It's not worth it. I'm not getting any support. Um, but I looked into suing the company um, for, because of the Health and Safety of Work Act. So I looked at it and inquired. Because um, basically using taxis is an unsafe thing to do under the health and safety. Um, so I actually put that in, it was about a while after, um, and actually they admitted it. So they actually paid out, it wasn't much, it was a couple of thousand pounds. Um, but they actually said, yeah. Did they start using their own transport after that? No, still using taxis now. T to be honest, um, it's not gonna made any difference, would it? No. If, if you'd have been no. in your own transport. No, was, yeah, exactly. And But it was too easy, as I say, because all it took was, he injured his hand and he did it himself. He punched the wall. He knew he was going to go out at some point during the next couple of days. He had lads waiting for him. Mobile phones on a wing. That's how easy it takes. He would have been low risk security. 12 months to serve as well. Yeah. He's not going to be... No, but at the time, it was two-man escorts anyway. Um, but after, after that happened to me, then they got moved to three-man escorts. Which is a still which made it doesn't difference. Matter, it doesn't make any. You could have five people on it. It doesn't matter. No. Um, so it was stupid. So later on, as I got to be an Oscar one. Three man escorts were a pain in the ass because it's just an extra member of staff that you never have no staff there, yeah, did you? No. So yeah, so so that was that in the escorts um, wise, and then after a while, they end up Neil Brennan got caught about twelve months later. Yeah. Uh, for attempted murder on the out, on the run, uh, he he escaped due to his girlfriend something to do with the bird. So I ended up having to I got called to court to give evidence. Um, what about the escape? Yeah, about the escape. Uh, because he was, was he getting he, charged he, for he that was, as well as? Yeah, so he right, pleaded okay. not guilty to the escape. Yeah. Um, but obviously, the, the information I gave that he was nervous, he was anticipating it. Yeah. Um, in hindsight, you know, he was ready for it. Yeah. Um, and that was the deciding point. So when I got there, they were saying, well, you know, you can sit behind the screen, you can, you know, you can do all that kind of thing. And I was like, well, no, I'll just. I'll just go and well, at the end of the day, you, you're saying what happened, aren't you? Yeah, exactly. And that's the sign. I know, I mean, I'm still working in there, you know what I mean? So yeah. I could still, you know, he's still got me trying there. It was still a threat, but it, I just, you know, um, but it didn't come to that because on the day that I got to court to give evidence, he actually changed his plea. Did he go to he, he went guilty. Once I know I was there. Yeah. Um, and I think he got 12 years. Um, I think he may have just been out. Well, he's probably just been out now. So that that is um, well, I don't even know what to say about that. So how long were you an officer then before you became an Oscar one? Um, I did. I went for my seniors. Um, I did twelve months. I think I got my seniors after 12, 18 months, which was yeah. quite quick at the time in them yeah. days because seniors didn't come up that often. Um, but I was put on a waiting list. There was only so many jobs for the actual people that passed the test yeah. and the interview. So I worked in security for a year doing MDT, uh, piss testing and whatnot, mandatory drug testing for for anyone, or voluntary drug testing. Yeah. Uh, it does exactly what it says, piss in a cup, dab test it, send it off, uh, as well as searching, security searching, searching staff, sellers, security and talent and whatnot. Great experience, isn't it? Good experience, yeah. And it was, I mean, don't me I didn't want to leave the wings because I love working on the wings, but it was just a case of, I was working on a wing, This I was waiting for my seniors, the senior one in particular, I didn't really get on with and I thought he was shite. So it was doing me head in. So I went to, I worked in NDT for a bit. We had a good set of lads, good little crew we had in there. Um, good lads, we all got on. Um, so we, that was a good laugh. And as I say, you learn a different side. Yeah, of course you do. You learn it and you see you're speaking to a lot of cons and you get your cons are giving you info, different things, blah, blah, blah. Um, so that was a good side, give me a good stead. And then I got, I got me SO position then. And then I worked on B-Wing. Uh, I was a senior on B-Wing um, for about four, four or five years. That is a long time. On a wing, in private sector, struggling every day, no yeah. staff. With the, the wing, I, I worked on B-Wing, and it was, it, when I went on there, it was a, we had all the known lads on there. It was a bit of a shithole, um, but it was one of them. I took it on, that right, we'll, 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 we'll crack on with this. I had a work with a lad called John with a girl called Diane, and yeah, so... Um, and we had a good little set of, we had a good team and then we started getting like an influx of, of new staff um, and for some reason we got all the good ones if you know what I mean yeah. so there was like there was, there was we had, we had we just had like 
I think about three or four courses. Do you not think they were good ones because you maybe mentored them and helped them? Maybe, yeah. I mean, we had like, a, lad, a lad called Mick Flarty, who, who was a really good lad. He was only a small lad, squat. All the cons loved him because he was great at his job. Uh, Carl Aspie. We had a lot of lads um, that were good lads, uh, staff, female staff as well, don't get me wrong. And, and yeah. people could learn off them. So then we got like, Dan for the Blasios, and we had um, uh, Debbie Ingham, Smoltini, and people like that, uh, Adam Gregory, and the wing just started, the more they got, you know, learning the job, and yeah. the more they started, and it calmed, the, the wing calmed right down. If, if, do you not think, if you settled and you've got regular staff, oh, it's easy. That, that's the one. Yeah, it's easy. He's, he's, it's once the cons he, get to know you. Yeah? Correct, absolutely, and you know your cons. You're getting the, the lads, and as a senior, you've got A2, uh, B2, B1. So you're responsible for two wings, in effect. Um, so you've got to go upstairs and look after yeah. the staff up there. And you're confident that your staff up there are going to look after you. Did you, you spend gonna, a lot you know of time I mean? on the wings as well? Yeah, I was, I was never off the wings. Never. And as an SO, I'd be like, fucking hell, why is he in the canteen? Like an SO. You know, your, your fucking wings on the arse there. When, when they brought SOs in for me, um, you had two on a wing, so... They'd look at it, you then had three because you had an SO, but all the SOs did, they were never on the wings. No, you, you never So there was still two on the wing. Yeah. But if you said anything, well, you know. You'd turn up and you'd, you'd be on the radio, where's your SO? And you'd be like, where are they? You, you know, it's, it's exercise now. Yeah. So one of you's got an exercise, yeah. leaving you one on the wing. Yeah. So however many lads. Again, people. It's chaos. You know. You don't, you don't realise. And I said, I've only got the aspect of private prisons, you've got the public. No, no, no. You know what I mean? It's, but it's... You've got both sides, but you look at it and go, Am I opening up on a wing? Do you know what I mean? See, you've just said that. A lot of public prisons are staffed, especially now, exactly the same as Forest Blank. The staffing's the yeah. same. The staff-prisoner ratio's the same. A lot of public sector prisons now are suffering exactly the same. Big turnover staff, a lot of new staff. Yeah. And there's no staff about. No. However, you said something, you don't know any different. No, exactly. So when you're at the bank, struggling every day as a senior, getting new staff, that's all you know, because yeah. you've, you've not... And it's the same with the prisoners as well, do you know what I mean? They don't understand, they... And because they know you, that you're trying to do your best, do you know what I mean? So they know, if, if you've only got one staff on today, boss, or whereas, you know what I mean? And they yeah. know, they can see that you're struggling as well. Don't be wrong, that some elements of them, they, oh, there's only two on today, we'll take the piss or whatever. Yeah, but, of course they're going to do they, that. They, you know, they see you struggling. I mean, it was, it was, it was, it was hard, but... Say the, the wing that we had, it was great, and as I say, we had so many good staff, so it was it was a chill wing, and I took great pride in that. And as I say, I was proud of the staff, and I knew, you know, when you like you worked in the block, so and I worked in the block later on. You know, if you've got a lad coming out the block who's finishing the good orders or the CT yeah, or whatever, yeah. and you know, it was a bit of a problem, I'd always say, Yeah, we'll have them. Do you know what I mean? Because I've got the staff that we can deal with them, you're exactly the I mean? same as me. Like that last six months on F wing, phone E wing, we've got four spaces. Who do you want? Anybody, yeah. Crappy talk when they come on the wing. It is very cliches. Well, nobody wants you. Get your head down on here, lad. Crack on. That's it. That's, and that's it. the best way to be, isn't it? But some wings, with certain staff, oh, no, such and such is due out the block. Uh, we'll get, and they, they do transfers off, off each other's wings just to fill their beds up so you don't get yeah, something yeah, yeah. from the block. And I was just like, you've got to go somewhere. Do you know what I mean? And sometimes, you know yourself, you get through to someone. Well, he may have been off every wing, bounced off every wing, nobody yeah. there with him. And he might not be that bad. They just need a break, don't they? Exactly. They just and need you to give them one, they'll appreciate yeah. that as well. Or give them a, you know, get them out of the cell, do a bit of cleaning for you. Do you know what I mean? He might. Because security wouldn't clear them. You know, you'd go, can I give whoever a job? Because you know yourself on your savoury, one of the hardest parts of the job is your food. Yeah, your food, every day it's a struggle. And then the kitchens will obviously be looking after their, their side. Just, just to explain that a bit, just how straight, see me. One of the most stressful times that I've been. I know they bang, they bang them up at Forest Bank now, don't they? They, don't used, know, yeah. they, yeah. they used to be out in the dinner. Oh, yeah, yeah. So yeah. there's two of you, new member of staff. So you'd stick that member of staff on surgery while you're unlocking, because that's when all the salts and everything yeah. used to happen. Of course. If they were 86 on fish and chips, they were 86 fish, weren't they? That's right. So yeah. a surgery lad or somebody took one extra. Yep, you'd be full. So then, yeah, exactly. So if you're waiting, and then Forest Bank as well, the worst thing at Forest Bank, they had so many roll counts. So roll counts. From, dinner time. So dinner time roll count. If your roll count's not coming through, yeah. so you've, you've, you've only got an allowed amount of time because you've still got to get out for work because as private prisons, 
<clears throat> you've got a controller that's employed by the home office to make sure you're adhering to the contracts yep. of what you what you specify for. So if you're not adhering to them, you get you get penalty points. Now, if you get so many penalty points, you get fines. Yep. And that's what managers don't want. And that's why you get moaned at. But if your roll count doesn't clear, you've still got the same amount of time to feed 97 lads, which it was at the time. Yeah. So if you've got 97 fish, you know, and you're counting them and you're the, you say every lads have not done the job properly or they're giving extras to the mates yeah. and you're not looking yeah. out for it, then you're, so then you're ringing up to the kitchens and saying, I need 10 fish, or well, we haven't got them. It's your, it's your orderlies or your survey lads or your yeah. staff have let them. Yeah. And you're like, no, I'm adamant to this. I counted the fish. Yeah. And it might sound stupid to anyone listening, but things you, like that. You count the food every day? Yeah. You have to, don't you? Of course you do. You call, and you can't lie and don't be wrong as I say because lads get bullied even save lads get bullied yeah, so you, you want your good lads on there you want your, your lads who may be the biggest lad or he's got a bit of now or he's got a bit of money on the out or you know this and that you get on your save because it's easy it makes your job easier um, so but it, food like that every day it could be a oh you run out of chips because it's a shovel of chips or a handful of chips yeah. and if you run out you've got 10 lads waiting for chips Stressful. Stressful. And as I say, if there's only me and you on the wing, yeah. one of us has got to go and get them chips. Yeah. So then you've got to run off the wing, get these chips, they come back, they might be cold, the lads are moaning about that. And then you've got to lock your wing up again. They might not have finished the dinners. So there's two of you. And that's an everyday occurrence. Do you know what I mean? But you don't get any help because the kitchens have got a budget themselves. I know people who work in kitchens. I know you'll get no help. Yeah. You know, mates yeah. were like, no, 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 I, I've sent you enough. Yeah. Deal with it all. But it got so bad that you'd have to go and get your food trolleys. You'd have to count the food getting put on with the kitchen member of staff. You'd count them. You knew that was right. Yeah. Then you'd go back down the wing and then you'd, open, you know, you'd wait for your food and whatnot. And it was every day. You know, and just think, what you know, you're talking pennies, lo loads of bread. You, they're getting them from the day before anyway. So they're yeah. paying 1p for, a, for yeah. a block of bread. Pennies to them. But if your wing goes off, which it has happened because your wing's gone off over food. Yeah, because food food's a big thing. Food and gym and stuff food, like that. Gym, visits, yeah. canteen. Phone calls at the time when there was no phone calls in yeah. the cells. And as I say, if you're, your old count's finishing late, you've got 100 lads that want to use the phone because the only time you've got to use the phone to speak to the partners is the time they're out the cells. Association. Dinner time, breakfast time. So you did? Did you say four years? As yeah, a senior? I did. A four, I, I did. I think I did total six years on a wing as a senior, uh, as a PR. Before PR. you got to Oscar one, yeah, which is a proper apprenticeship. That isn't yeah, it? and I would never have left the wing, so I loved it. And the team I had on there, we had such a good team, and we had. And like you said to you before, you walk in and look at the EU briefing sheet, and you know if you've got three staff and three staff that are spot on, yeah, you know your day's yeah. easy. You buzz off it, don't you? Absolutely. So you know you've got a cracking day in store. So Oscar One, Oscar One is shift manager role. Yeah. Um, you have a governor on even at weekends. However, Oscar One, they run the jail. They're the shift manager. They deal with incidents. They deal with staffing. They deal with everything. Yeah. Uh, busy role. Good Oscar. I, well, I told you, didn't I? Five good Oscar Ones when I, I remember them all when I started. And that's always a job I really fancied doing. And, you know, I, you're here, there and everywhere, aren't you? Yeah, you don't get a minute, really. No. No. Um, yeah, I got the Oscars job. I went for a manager's job originally. Uh, I didn't think I'd get it, um, but I interviewed quite well um, for the manager's unit manager's job, uh, and I missed out. And I thought I was in pretty good chance. Into you when you go out yeah. into and think, I was I was not experienced enough for it because I've not done the Oscars job. You know, you need to go through those roles before you you know you, you go through and get your apprenticeship. So I got offered the Oscars job. Um, and I didn't really want to leave B Wing because because I, I enjoyed it, but it's a step up. Obviously, it's more money. Uh, and it's a different role. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so I started the Oscars job, uh, shift manager. Um, yeah, and it's totally different. There's so much responsibility because as you say, you're getting, you're getting to work at half six in the morning, you're ticking the staff in. You've got to make sure your jail's staffed um, before you even unlock. Um, and as I say, you've got your, your plan. But you're under pressure, aren't you? Oh yeah. Private sector. Yeah. You've Leaving got, everyone locked up is not an option. No, no, because as I say, you've got a contract, you've got your controller, you got your managers, so you you've got obviously you've got your governors, your your number two, your, your different structure of the jail. But during that day, if you're a manager during the day and you're Victor Two is what it's classed as, you're responsible for me and you you're my boss for that day. So you'll tell me, right, we need to move Joe Bloggs, he's getting transferred, we need to put him on a van. Uh, he needs to go to the block. 
something's happened, this is what and you as an Oscar one, I need authorization from you to do something. Yeah. You know, so if if I'm responding to an incident, there's a fight on a wing and our, our lad's been dropped, he's he's been twisted up. Right, we're, we're taking a block, have I got enough beds in a block? You know what I mean? And that kind of thing is what you're dealing with. So not all the time, but if if you've got something planned, you need to run that through for the victor too to say, yeah, you can do that. Um but yeah, you don't stop from the, from from the minute you walk through the door. Um, from anything, you know, you've got your Oscar, you've got your radio, you might have during a day, you've got, you might have hundreds of phone calls about whatever, um, you know, you're responding to your radio, any incidents that happen. How many bells? We bells every day. Oh yeah, every day, every day. Um, personal arms every day. And then obviously you've got, as well as dealing with incidents, you've got your regimes of your jail, which you've got to adhere to regardless of work. work. Unlock, work, medication, movement to work, Obviously, there's mass movements, 800 odd lads. It's a move to work and whatnot. And exercise, every wing's got to come out, wing by a time, get them on the yard. They've got to have the required amount of time on the yard. Stressful job. Stressful job, non stop. Loved it, brilliant job. I mean, the things you see, and you're not confined to a wing as well sometimes, you know what I mean? You're, right, you're running around the jail non stop, yeah. you're getting rid of escorts. You know, you sit sometimes, you know, you're in seg, you, you know, you're doing, you're doing different things. So you don't stop, you know, you're running about all, all day. Um, and it's rewarding, you know, you, you know, and you're responsible for the job. You get respect. If you're good at your job, you get respect. Yeah, I mean, the same From as anyway. From staff and prisoners, yeah. how you deal with them. And, and, and they'll know, you know, they'll see, prisoners aren't daft, they know more than you, so, you know, so they'll know who's running the jail, they'll know who's responding to it, and they'll know your Oscar one, and, you know, you'll have that banter. Because what I did miss, because I loved working on the wings, because you were the, you were the lads every day, the cons, the prisoners or whatever you want to call them and then you know if i'm locking you up at, at, at eight o'clock at night i'm unlocking you at half six in the morning so you don't get a bond per se but you see them every day more than you see in your family and it, it's a hard to explain to people that haven't done the job you, you know it, it's hard you do get a sort of bond and you, you know, dynamic security my big one staff prisoner relationships makes it safe people knowing you knowing how you are knowing you're fair or you see, you get trained, when, and, I, and I was always remembering, you know what I'm saying? You don't tell them anything. Don't tell them where you're from. Don't tell them what football team you support. Yeah. Don't tell them this. It's impossible. You know, and you know, you're going into cells every day. If you treat and speak to people right, you you have no fear in that job. Yeah. For me. The job, the job is common sense. It's not about being hard. It's not about being a tough guy. It's not being about being a, an idiot or a prick because... You, there's two of you three of you between 100 lads 97 lads or whatever it takes two prisoners one prisoner to cause murder for you throughout yeah. the day um, as I say and it's, it's, if you're entitled to it you can have it and as I say you, you, you see you go into these cells every day you're seeing pictures of the kids you're, you're yeah. asking about them they've got issues you know they come up to you and a lot of the lads can't some of them can't read or write so you're helping them with that they've got issues and you can you know when they're down you can see what's up you've had a bad phone call you know and, and you know, you can might get a phone call from a lad who's visits who's just had an argument with his bed and he's yeah. just come back to wing. You know, you, you know the lad. Yeah, of course. And you know what's coming. So you, you've got to try and calm this lad down. I want to ask you something now. How many lads who have been involved in an incident, you know, maybe had to restrain them, take them to the block or whatever, once that's dealt with, have sort of cracked on with you and obviously don't become your best mates, but them first interactions, if you're fair, and a lot of prisoners for me, if they've done something wrong, they take it on the chin, don't they? Yeah. If you do them wrong, you're not fair, they're not going to be happy. But if they've done wrong, they'll take it on the chin and they're not going to, you know, they're not going to come back on you. Yeah, I, I, countless, countless times, you know, you, you've been involved in a use of force or whatever, or a lad, you know, you've had to put him behind his door or whatever because he's had a bad time. You get that, they might be on a buzzer. Two hours later, boss won't apologise for that. Or can you tell Miss I'm sorry I called her a slag or fucking whatever and that kind of thing and it's just just the moment and you know you you use force. Don't and, take things personal. Exactly um, and lads have said oh sorry boss I've seen like two days later I'm sorry about that I shouldn't have kicked off about my medication things like that so you've had to deal with him in the meds queue when you've got twenty lads waiting for the meds yeah. you've got to take one out with not many staff it's yeah. a difficult job to do but the fair but towards later on. In the time of being at Forest Bank, then the sort of the prisoners, whereas when I started, jail's jail. It's kind of old school mentality towards where they got too much and you know, jail changed and the dynamics of the jail changed. Prisoners were just there was no sort of regard for that anymore. I'd I'd, I'd find that it's it's gone from respect. Did did gone. you did you start getting a lot of bang up? Because you were short 
Um, no, what, one bit they weren't locking down. Were no, they? You no, 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 not at all. We never locked down for years, and I'd, it was dangerous. It was at a point that it was stupidly dangerous. The staffing um, levels, staffing no levels. spare staff there, anywhere. There was not. There was not. I was running through first response um, on me up with two of us. Yeah. Two first response with like first response. So there's supposed to be people carrying radios, aren't the response radio? Yeah. And it is what it is. If there's an incident, four of you should attend. There's a second response if you need yeah. them. Yeah. Normally, it'd be all hands on deck, wouldn't it? Of course if it anyone was spare, you yeah. didn't have a radio, you would go anyway. Don't. But it got to a point where there were nobody. Not at all. I mean, literally nobody. You'd walk into the jail, you'd, you'd staff, you'd have, maybe we should have had three staff to every wing. You'd be dealing with two with no response. You know, I, I always remember one, there was, there was a lad on, it was oh, F, F2, I think. There was two lads on a pool table throwing pool balls. And you know, if you get one of them at your head, I had to pick up a table to get behind to walk towards them. That's how shit it was. The table fucking fell off. I was stood there with a frame. <laughs> okay, honestly, I was like, what the fuck's going on here? And it was common, it was stupid, and it was so dangerous. But then you were going to management and going, What are we doing about this? I can't open up here. It's just well you're gonna have to. Obviously the controllers you but I can't open up the gym. And then you've got escorts to do. You've got this to do, you've got transfers, you've got to get teams kitted up to move people to transfer. I haven't got a team to do that. So, and all this time, you've got to do other things, but you've got to make sure your regimes are running, you've got to make sure exercise gets out, you've got to make sure you go to work. And all this with no staff, as well as response, as well as everything no, That's all we knew, isn't it? All you did, and it was every day. And you, it got to that point, you, as long as you got through your day, you'd be like, we'll, we'll bring tomorrow. I know you might have an emergency escort at five to eight. You had a fight five to eight just before bang up. I were way out of that job. Uh, like I said, we crossed over. I think I left two four, but that that feeling you've just said now, you know, we put final person behind the door at twenty to nine, yeah. maybe kicking off, and when you walk out, you forget about it very quick. Yeah, don't you? Oh yeah, I mean you you try and get your paperwork done because when you use force, then you've got to make sure your paperwork's correct. You've got to you know you've got to make sure someone's seen an ass or whatever, and you've got to make sure you you, you know you're, you're tight. But sometimes you just want to go home. But you know, the next day you've got to do the paperwork. But if you get your, let's say you get your last lad behind the door, and you know yourself when you're on your wing, you know if someone's bouncing about, you think we're going to have trouble here, bang up. You know, it's going to be bang up, and or you wait for a purse alarm. It's always five minutes before because they know you're busy. Uh, the lads know, so it's, it's going to go off. Um, and they can be quite crafty like that. Um, but yeah, it was difficult, you know, and you see, you see, you know, you see some bad things. And as I say, as an Oscar, you're dealing with them because you're the first response to it. So you responded to those incidents. And, you work a lot of overtime. Yeah, yeah, a lot of overtime. Uh, the stuff, but a lot of people did. The only way that, that jail, that jail would, how it happened to, to carry on was people's goodwill. You know, and that was the only, as an, Oscar, as an Oscar one, I would do, I would only be able to do my job for yeah. the staff. Yeah. You know, people would do, there's, like, there's a fella called Dave Larson, I'll use him, he's a good mate of mine, but he would do regular 24 hour shifts. He would work all day. He would, and I'd say, Dave, I need someone to stay on five to eight from me. I've got no staff to do meds. I'll stay on for you. So he'd stay on, um, Alan Hunt, another one. Always used to stay on for me. Is he still there, Hunt? Yeah, yeah, was, good lad. It was ex army, funny yeah. as fuck. Yeah, he is, yeah. Uh, he helped me out so many times. And there's there numerous people that would do that. And they'd only do it for me. You know, if yeah, I was of course good, you, you know, do. Yeah, I, and, you know, I, I said, I, I mentioned that the Oscars would know you. They'd have a look on paper and you'd think, Two names would pop out, two of your mates, so you, you yeah. would, will you do us this, will you do you that? Exactly. And, and as I say, back in the day, you used to be able to, look, if you stay on for me tonight, I'll have tomorrow off. Because you knew your, sh yeah. your staffing sheets tomorrow, you'd have a look at it, so you knew you were all right. Yeah. So it was a favour for a favour kind of thing. But like the likes of Dave, so he'd stay on till 8 o'clock for me, but then I'd have an emergency escort go out. A lad who's been beaten up, or a lad who's had, they think he might have a heart attack or whatever. So then he'd go out for me, stay on all night. And he'd be coming back in the morning, and I think he's done 20. Yeah. And this happened non stop. And then the likes of that, the, the, we'll talk about management whenever. Uh, the likes of lads I've sent out doing that and doing a 24 hour shift, they've been sacked, cuffed up to a prison, and he fell asleep just because they're exhausted. Yeah, of course. They've been reported by the nurse and staff to say, well, these fell asleep here. Management have then suspended this lad, or maybe even sacked them, or, or female staff, or whoever it was. And that's happened before. But they're doing you a favour and end up losing a job over it. And it, it gets to that stage. It was happening all the time. And you're like, people have got to drive home as well. 
you know, they've got to go, then they've got to get through traffic to get home in the middle of Manchester at yeah. half eight, nine the, o'clock the, in the morning. Shift hours when you're doing nights of crap, aren't they? Yeah. Um, so I just rely, as I say, I could only do the job for the for the staff, and they were so generous with the with the time because they've got families. You know what I mean, if you're doing, and people do seventy hour weeks, you know, they, you know, they had a couple of lads to do 100, 150 hours a month over time. Last couple of months, I did. That's what yeah. I did. And you, I mean, don't be wrong. If you if, if if you say if you say to me I'll come on for that, as long as I'm on my wing, you know I don't want to I don't want to be dicked. Don't yeah, dick me, but yeah. fine. I'll make sure you're on your wing yeah. because you, you've got a body in the door. You know what I mean? But then sometimes you, you but if there was other people on or managers you see, or details who used their job to staff it, they couldn't get them staff to do it sometimes because they didn't get the holidays they weren't entitled to or things. So it's all politics really. Um, but it, yeah, so it, it was only due to the fact that the staff were that good. Um, and dedicated to the job, and they didn't want to leave the mates and shit, you know, and you didn't want to see, and they'd say, oh, I'll, I'll do tomorrow for you because I don't want my colleague to be on their own or whatever. And that's how I got by, you know, and it, and it was on the goodwill, but you then you'd say to the management and say, listen, Dave Larson's done this for me, can you look after him? Can you make sure, you know, he deserves something? Yeah, yeah, of course oh, you. Oh, don't matter about him. You know, they didn't care, didn't care. And, and as I say, and I got to that stage, people were just like, why am I not even seeing my kids for three days? Um, I've not even fucking, you know, my wife's pissed, pissed off on me because I've not been home. I've just done yeah. 24 hours. Oh, is he really doing a shift? Or is it, oh, where are you? Do you know what I mean? That yeah. kind of thing. And, it, and that does have a toll on, on, on your home life. But there was not, nothing management would, wouldn't give a fuck. Were you exhausted all the time? Um, not, not exhausted. I was tired, don't get me wrong. The days were long, but then you'd get some days that they were easy. Do you know what I mean? Some days you'd have no, you'd have nothing happening, uh, but then you'd have your days where few and far between them, weren't they? It was, it was. But when Spice came in, then the whole dynamics and the whole prison game changed for me. When Spice came in, what we're looking at about two fourteen, something like that. I'd probably say around there, yeah. I'd say then because obviously, like when you work on the wings, you know you're gonna have weed. You know, subby text was a big one with your yeah. lads, subbies and that. And then your weed, you'd smell your weed on your wing, you know, it'd be chilled. It's when you haven't got weed is the problem, yeah. you know what I mean? Because yeah. then everyone's trying to say, who's got what, who's got what, and you're going to have issues. Don't be wrong, if you know who's got, you know, you, as long as you don't take the piss, you know, you're on your wing, don't take the piss. If I'm on shift, you do it behind your door, whoever, do you know what yeah. I mean? When I'm gone home, because you, you wouldn't find it, you do yourself searches, you might have some weed. Just, you know, just to explain that again, because people don't understand, you know, the sort of things people used to send me, how they get drugs in jail. You get them in numerous ways, don't they? Yes. Some of them are taken in uh, in them places that we don't want to talk about. Yeah. Um, there's no such thing as a drug-free wing. Never. And I am the same as you. If, you know, Saturday bang up, you know, you do your count, you can smell weed or whatever, you, you're never going to find all drugs. You're never no. going to stop it going in, so... No. It's all about you know doing as much as you can. I mean, it's not it's not turning a blind eye. It's trying to manage what you can physically do with your time, because if like you say like before, that. if we're on a, if we're on a wing, you've got you've got a, a, a mandatory amount of cell searches you've got to do every month. Yeah. So if you've got thirty cell searches a month to do, you've got to do one a day basically. Now, if you're working on a YO wing, they've got fifty seven shower gels. 27 boxes of crunching up cornflakes. Yeah. Fucking everything. It's like cash and carry in there. Yeah, in so, the cells. Yeah. So if you're in a double cell with YOs who can spend £30 a week on a canteen, yeah. that's going to, to do that cell search properly, that's going to take two hours. You're you know? not doing it, are you? You're doing it in 10 minutes. You do it Spin. in 10 minutes. It's, it's, you try and do it as much as you can. You have, you've got your one, which are fucking useless anyway. So you're trying to, you know, you're looking for phones, you look, but you've obviously the phones nowadays that you're not going to find them, you know. And they're ten a penny anyway, so you're trying to do your cells, but spell spins as quick as you can. Don't be wrong, and that's on top of if you've got intel, right? You need to spin in because we've just got an SIR security information report. So you've got to do that as well as all, all the other shit you've got to do. And the staff are just non stop, and that's why I respect people on the wings because I know how hard it is to work on a wing, is the, the most difficult job in the jail. It's it's never ending for them, and any prison, uh. There's a lot of specialist jobs. Like if you look at high security state, obviously we had things at Strange where you didn't have a dog section and that. They're specialist jobs. Gyms classed as a specialist mm-hmm. job. This the specialist job in the prison service for me is face to face, cold face, on wings, 
dealing with prisoners. It. it is the most difficult job. Um, can be the most rewarding job. That's definitely. And, and all those areas of the jail should be specifically attributed to help the wings because that's your bread and butter. That's where all, your, that's where all the incidents happen, majority of incidents. Your exercise yards. You know, if, a lad, if lads don't want to think they're not getting the full hour or it's, it's sunny, you know, and they don't want to come in off the yard. You've got 100 lads on the yard that don't want to come in, or 60 lads on the yard. Yeah. You know me as an Oscar one, as a shift manager, but they don't know me. But I I know you know them. So yeah. I could say to you, do me a favour, can you go and speak to them lads before yeah, we have yeah. to, uh, things? So you could go on that wing, and you could, and, or the exercise and dynamic security and you, again, and you get, it, you get it them in. All right, all right, we'll, we'll do a few. We're only taking a piss, blah, blah. But if I walked on as an Oscar one said, right, lads, you fucking, you don't get off the yard, you're losing your gym. And that escalates everything again. Yeah, because uh, so then, so it's it's all about doing what you can to just to do what you can, and that, that's that's all you can do. And but it got to that stage where because of the high turnover of staff and the levels of people leaving, that they just had enough and through no support, you, you haven't got that craft. So you know you've you've not got the wing craft. So you've There's got a lot of young people now. Yeah, there? and that's it. And so you've got a lot of young kids. To, and there's no disrespect to people who are younger. That we we all mature different ages, but. You know they're not they, they haven't got the ability and they've not seen you know and they've not got that got no one to learn off which is the main thing yeah and that's the most difficult thing and that, that was what it was getting harder every year so the amount of staff that the good staff the experienced staff that were leaving they weren't we weren't getting that the like for like swap we were getting experience done four five six seven eight years yeah. and then we're getting people and then it was just non-stop 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 how many courses a year roughly were they running do you reckon when I, before i left yeah Three or four. And how many people will be on them courses? Um, minimum 15, but probably between 15 and 20. So let, let, let's say they're recruiting 80 new staff a year. How many staff, it doesn't have to be, right, would you say work in that jail? Or how many, what, what would you say the total staffing in that jail was? You know, everyone who worked there, office staff, the lot. Oh, God. If, well, g h wings, so you've got eight wings. With, with every area, you've got a couple of hundred staff. Right, a couple hundred, and they're recruiting almost half of them every year. Yeah, yeah. And it, as I say, and then you're just picking up the staff, picking up either. And, and all you've got left on the wings are people that are left, they stay on the wings because, and they don't really give a fuck anymore. So they're, they're, they're happy on there. They've got no, you know, they've got no enthusiasm because it's just been beaten out of them. Or they're brand new. So you're learning either, bad, bad sorts of techniques on yeah. people that, that don't want to be there or you're just learning off brand new staff and that has an effect that has an effect on the whole right. the whole jail um, coming up to our now yeah we're all limited for time today I just want to ask you a few questions a lot of people uh, sort of watch the channel message me talk to a lot of people going into the job thinking of going into the job um, your best advice people going into the job, what would you say? If somebody come and said, right, Paul, uh, I'm going into this job, what, what? just a couple of things, it don't have to be anything complicated at all. I would encourage people to go into it. I, I, loved, I loved the job, as difficult as it was. Um, it, like you say, it's such a rewarding job, because you know, you-, you... I, I buzzed, if, I've, I've told you before, if something had happened to me at Forest Bank, I loved the job. Yeah. Yeah, the money was shit. Uh, I worked loads of overtime. It was nothing to do with the money, all the conditions, all the lack of staff, I loved it. But something happened and it changed it for me. Yeah. How people reacted to me changed. So I, I just that didn't. Was it. Yeah. But um, it can be rewarding. It's very challenging. It is. I, I always say, right, I'll tell you what I say. I, t I tell people to be humble. Yeah. You know, uh, listen to people and, you know, just ask questions. And if there's no one around, you know, you just have to... Yeah. Sometimes you have to just take it on the chin, don't well, that's you? that's it. I mean, the thing is, I always used to say to new staff that if you've got good staff to learn off, then that's easy because you can pick up little bits off him or her and then you work it into your own little thing. You don't have to copy them, but you think, well, that's work for him. I'll, I'll use that. And we're all different anyway. You know, you just I might work with you and we've got a totally different way of working, but we can work together and it works because, you know, it, it's the dynamics. But definitely humble because you're not better than anybody at the end of the day. The circumstances for whatever want somebody's in for the, the best odds you're ever going to get are two to ninety seven yeah. on a wing. Yeah, and, and as I say, if, if two lads, it only takes two or three lads, and then it's concerted discipline. 
Do you know what I mean? That, yeah. That's basically it. That's what it's. That's what it's classed as. Which means, yeah, more than two people kicking off or whatever. Um, that's what they call it, don't yeah. you? And, and you it, can and have it, trouble. And it, and it only takes something small. Someone's over the bars, and then that's it. Then someone climbs over. But yeah, learn. Just be humble. Take it all in as much as you can. Don't try and be a know it all because that's the worst thing you can be. Um, as I say, it's it's common sense. The job, basically. I mean, you're not going to learn everything, and you're going to make mistakes. But the problem is, it's, it's just trying you know not to make them twice. That's yeah. it. You know, you're going to because you're going in with lads who have done a lot of jail. Do you know, they know more than you. I mean, when I started, they were telling me, right, boss, lock him up. He doesn't. He, he shouldn't be out. And they're looking after you. They know exactly what time. And I will touch on later that I obviously know yeah. what happened to me. Yeah. So I know from the other side of it. So, but you know what's going to happen. Um, as I say, so you're not expected to learn. So, what would you like to talk about in future? Corruption? Corruption, yeah. We'll talk about, yeah, uh, incidents that I've dealt with. Um, yeah. A lot of serious incidents. Yeah. Um, you know, I've had a lad who got murdered in a cell. Lads, obviously, unfortunately, suicide. The effects of spice, deaths yeah. with spice. Um, but again, we'll talk about corruption with the management structure of Forest and, Bank. And, co- and corruption isn't always what people think, is it? Everyone always thinks straight away... People taking drugs and phoning. Yeah. I've seen plenty of corruption. I'm yeah, talking yeah. about management covering things up. Yeah, there's been a lot of that. In pe- people getting pushed out of the job who were yeah. really good and people staying in the job who were really bad. Exactly. And I've got so many instances of that, of people that have been pushed out and have lost their jobs just by doing the jobs. But unfortunately, certain managers that wanted them out or wanted a different way of working, which they think was how it should be, which it's proved not to be over recent events of the management structure changing in Forest Bank. Um, but there's been a history of, of years of leading up to that stage of the, the decline of the jail and, and to what unfortunately it is now. Um, but yeah, we'll talk about that and obviously the corruption side of it and then sort of my my change of ways of me leaving and, and my story after that, really. Do you know what? I've enjoyed the chat, mate. No, I have. I absolutely you. appreciate your time. No, I thank you. Uh made me smile. Some of them names you mentioned. Woody, Unte... Keith Sullivan. Oh yeah, Keith Brownie. There's been a there's some Brownie, yeah, there. some when I think back they do make me smile then. There's some cracking officers and lasses. Some yeah, lasses well, you some mentioned members. as well that I knew. Um so yeah, all good. Yeah, no thank Thanks. You. We'll meet up again. Definitely. And uh, we'll get on it, yeah? Yeah, cool. Much appreciated. Cheers.